This is Dean Treadway here with the, at the Atlanta Film Festival here at the Highland Ballroom, the little room over to the side here, and I'm here with uh, writer and director of the new film Wild Like. His name is Frank Hall Green. It's good to see you. Thanks, Dean. Thanks for having me. Uh, good to see you. I wanted to tell you first of all, I love I love the film so Thanks much. Thanks so much. I think it's really, really, really terrific. It seems like it would would have been a would be a quite quite a hard movie to do since you're actually filming mostly out in the, the Alaskan wilderness. Can you talk a little bit about the, uh, well, let's, let's talk about what the film is about first of all. Sure, sure. I'm really bad at doing synopses of my own films, but um, it's about a young, a young teen girl who's sent to Juneau, Alaska to live with her uncle. Um, the relationship doesn't turn out you know quite the way one would hope and she feels threatened and she runs away and being trapped in Alaska she uh, finds an older backpacker played by Bruce, Bruce Greenwood and who she tracks and follows along uh, unfortunately deeper into Alaska and then um, together they're sort of confronted with with what to do with her situation and, and how to get her back to school. I think you did a superb job. Okay with, great. <laughs> that yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. How did you how did you decide to to film it in Alaska? First of all, I mean you're not from there. You're a New Yorker. Aren't I'm you? a New Yorker. But I'm from but here. You're from from, 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 yeah, from, Atlanta. from Atlanta. But I grew up um, getting. I, I grew. I became an avid backpacker as a teenager, um, going up North Georgia and South and North Carolina, Tennessee, and um, when I moved to New York, I just kept on going on bigger and bigger backpacking trips, and eventually I went to Denali, mm -hmm. uh, actually with my wife in 2003. And we travel across Alaska to get to Denali and back, and and so the whole state and Denali National Park just was lodged in my mind as this really beautiful place, you know, vast, differing landscapes, um, interesting people, uh, this sort of frontier area of America. Mm -hmm. um, it just seemed like a great backdrop that brought a lot of production quality and could create a really wonderful story. Yeah, I mean, almost any place that you turn the camera, you're going to get a great shot, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, and and uh, sometimes, sometimes for me, you know, uh, visual splendor is something that's sometimes missing from indie movies. Like, I agreed. I don't think that they. <laughs> Uh, sometimes you know you feel like you're caught inside some apartment, right? For the right. entire film. Yeah, so and this was a real breath of fresh air. I would agree, and I mean, on one side, I would say, hey, look, you want to make your movie, you don't need much money to do it. You just need to tell a great story with some good performances, uh -huh. and that can be anywhere. But you know, do you need to do it in an apartment when you could go, you know, go do it in the woods, you know, or go do it on a rooftop, or you know. You can always find something that's new and different in locations. You know, you don't have to go to Alaska, but I agree. It's it's important to me. I'm visual. I'm first an image visual person, so uh -huh. the story maybe is slightly secondary. Uh, that might not, you know, be the best thing for a writer director, but that's the way I am. So right. I was talking with uh, Mike Lee, you know, the mm -hmm. British director yes. earlier this year. And uh, we were talking about Mr. Turner and talking about it's like a beautiful movie. It is, and uh, and I said, is it a more expensive or difficult um, uh, sort of venture to go and film a, on location as you did? And he said, no, it's actually quite. <laughs> you could you don't have to spend a lot of money to show right. somebody climbing a mountain or right. whatever. You don't have Agreed. to build any sets or anything. Yeah, for us it was a, I think it was an asset as well as a liability. It ended up evening itself out. I mean, on one hand, the locations are there. Not a lot of people film in Alaska. They were welcoming to us. Most of the locations were were you know no cost or low cost. The crew and the cast wanted to come and see those places. You know, uh -huh. everyone had a great time. Did you guys camp out? out? No, you didn't do that. No, we just we had a lot of work to do, and and you know, you know having the crew without showers or that you know, it, it, it would have been not good for them. <laughs> but some of them expected it. Uh huh. Uh, so you know, <laughs> okay. some of them wanted they to do ready. it. They were ready. They were ready. Okay. But no, I mean, a lot of times we're, even though it looks like we're in the middle of nowhere, and sometimes we're 80 miles from anything except a dirt road, but we're always near, relatively near a dirt road or a trail or something, mm -hmm. you know. So your film actually has, uh, well, it has Ella, uh, Ella, what's the Purnell. Purnell. Ella Purnell, Ella Purnell. right. Um, Ella Purnell is in it, uh, and 
uh, she's a British actress, right? She's British. Yeah. So she did a pretty good job she's at, great. at convincing us, well, with the American accent and everything. Everything, yeah. She, um, I saw her in Never Let Me Go, where she plays a young version of Kira Knightley. She's and, great. Uh, That's a great movie, by the way. It is a great film. Yeah, <laughs> and I was actually looking, I was out in L.A. looking for the girl, which, and I was not having luck, and I saw her in that movie, and so I had met with her agent that day, or one of her agents, and I texted the agent and, and, and called her and said, I just found Ella Purnell. This is the girl. Like, why didn't you show me this person earlier? Right. She said, well, she's British, and, you know. Um, but Ella started speaking American English from the moment she got off the plane until until the moment she got back on the plane. Really? 24-7. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there were a couple of moments where she got really tired uh -huh. and slipped into her British, but it was very few and far between. Wow. Or unless she was entertaining us with, you know, a British accent or something. But she's great. The crew loved her. She's really sweet. She's on a great path. Um, she's, you know, working at her schooling and also, you know, in some really big pictures. She's in Tim Burton's new movie. She's oh. playing a young Jane in the remake of Tarzan. Okay. Um, and a lot of other good parts coming up. But we stay in touch. She and her family are great. She's terrific in the film. And, uh, and you know, the film ha touches on some, you know, some pretty difficult subject matter in that uh, it has an angle of uh, sexual abuse in it. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you how did you come up, come about to film this story or figure out a way to dovetail these two kind of, Can you know, the Alaskan mm -hmm. element and, the, and yeah. then this, this element with the... It came to me fair, pretty much all at once. I had already had the, the social issue component in my mind as something I wanted to tackle and show on screen and, and show on screen maybe a different way than it had been done before. And I saw it as a challenge of, you know, can I, can I actually do this and make it convincing and, and make it feel real and, and make it feel how it really maybe happens rather than mm -hmm. dramatized. Right. Because um, it happens very quietly mm -hmm. and very, without, without a lot of... No, no, no. Like yeah. a, uh, he doesn't say anything. She doesn't say anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's not like it's violent alcoholic like throwing a beer bottle or you know pinning someone down or anything. And I don't think that happens that often. It uh -huh. happens, but that's not that's not um, the majority of the cases, at least that I've researched. But I um, I already had Alaska in the back of my mind. I also knew I wanted to tell a story about someone going out into nature and what they might experience mm -hmm. in the, on that journey. I like the idea of sort of a, a, a directionless journey and, uh -huh. and trajectory, and, and, and then there was the social issue component, and it was very obvious that Alaska, frontier, innocence, mm -hmm. you know, played directly against the social issue part mm -hmm. of it, about a young girl and, and, and what sh she would experience in terms of, you know, her, her life going forward as a frontier and her innocence is something to be you know, lost, and, and um, it just worked really well. All fit it, together you nicely. also have uh, Bruce Greenwood, who's, mm -hmm. uh, who's, you know, I guess getting more uh, eyes on his work with, you know, some of the blockbuster movies like Star yeah. Trek and some play Captain Sure, Park I mean, he's always but, been, yeah. But but he's always been all over the place. Yeah, I mean, he's always been uh, a big deal. A lot of people might remember him from, uh, from uh, he played JFK in right. uh, 13 Days. Yep. Uh, he was terrific in that. And uh, and was also in a lot of Adam McGoyan's movies, including uh, uh, Exotica and uh, Sweet Hereafter. And a few others as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Sweet Hereafter is where I first saw him, uh, yeah. and uh, was impressed by his performance. I think the whole world was impressed. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like this is a movie that uh, is is a real gift for him because we don't really get to see. It doesn't feel like we get to see him as a lead. Uh, it's a very shame. often. Yeah, it's a shame. He's got a number of talents, you know. For one, he can absolutely be a leading man. Two, he's a hilarious comedian. Uh -huh. Three, he's also a talented musician and singer. He's got a fabulous voice. Oh, I didn't know and, that. Yeah, and, and he writes some of his own music. And, I mean, he he should really be, you know, starring as, you know, like Crazy Heart. Uh -huh. He could have completely owned that role. Absolutely. You I know? can absolutely see him yeah. something like that. Um, but there, was a, there was a little bit of, in this movie, uh, there was... A, a little 
sense of like almost like a Clint East like a Clint Eastwood mm-hmm. type uh, mm-hmm. feel going yeah. on in in his uh... well, it's funny. I think he has a tremendous amount of depth, and when I experience working with him, there's always several layers of consideration of what he's doing, what he's projecting, what his character's thinking about, and I really appreciated that and and. Um, so I think you know he can he can play serious very very well, uh-huh. and I think that's because he's so layered. I think a lot of other a lot of people who are very funny I think do do layered work mm-hmm. really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's tremendous in the movie. Also, Brian Garrity's in it. Yeah, Brian's great, and uh, he did a good job of actually um, keeping this uh, keeping this character of a sexual predator. Um, not, I, I guess not sympathetic, but definitely on the edge, you know? That was our intention, for sure. I mean, Brian brings a humanness to the character that was super important to both of us. Not a um, ridiculous, vil- over-the-top villain or anything. No, I mean, he's a, you know, um, you know, he's, he's a sick individual, but he's a, but he's a, um, he's a human being, and he brings a three-dimensional um, part. There's actually, there was actually more of that in the original script, and what we filmed, we really wanted to put it forth more. Um, so it was important to me to, to show that character as, as being a person, um, for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, one other cast member that's notable is Ann Dowd, who, yeah. who's been on our show, who's been on Movie Geeks United, to, uh, in, in connection with Compliance. So great. Which was here at yeah. the festival a, a few years ago. Yeah. Then you know she's really a, a, a very nice, wonderful, smart woman. Yeah. And I was wishing that she was in the, in the movie more. She's got one, one tremendous know. scene in it. But I do like movies that have uh, a room for like a, a one scene kind of character. Mm-hmm. I think that's a sort of a difficult thing to do. I mean, uh, to 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 find the. I mean, were there more scenes that, that you had? There in, were uh, more in? sort of tangential scenes in the script. There were a couple more uh-huh. um, that got you know winnowed away as as we got closer to the production but it was important to me that that they meet some other characters along the way uh-huh. it's also important in the story that there's a moment that bart c- becomes complicit to mckenzie's secrets and 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 agenda right you know he has a turn bart has a chance there to to turn her in or reveal what's going on and he does not right and so that's the main part of that um of that tangent and then lastly there's just some I think there were some things to accomplish in in Alaska and in the story of sort of like what you know we could be here for this reason and and this is you know what what visiting Alaska is all about mm-hmm. and and you know a, a different not to be running you know from something but to just be out there experiencing life and and also for Mackenzie to see a woman in adulthood it's coming from a completely different place than any other women she's met before it's mm-hmm. an independent woman you know, she's out yes. there doing her own thing. She might as well be, you know, a man. There's no challenge that is, you know, too great for her. That's the main thing I got from yeah. that scene. Was yeah. the sort of uh, that that exact very feeling. strong, self-assured woman that clearly came from a background that was also troubled. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I love the quietness of your movie. There's not a lot of music in your film uh, that I remember. Is that something that you, that you I mean, as a are, filmmaker, kind of want to stay away from? There is a lot of score. From? You probably, yeah, there is a lot of score. But, yeah, I definitely tried to stay away from it. There's oh, very wait, little... no, there is, a, there is a good score in it. But I, I'm, I'm mistaken now. Yeah. I'm completely mistaken. It's quiet in Actually, the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Very quiet. But it does have a beautiful score in it, now that I'm being reminded of it. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of songs we license, and then there's a, you know, a good bit of score... Um, through the travelogue part of the movie. Um, but I did want to, for example, in the sexual abuse scenes, um, we specifically did not want to have music there. Absolutely. We wanted it to be a, as sort of lifelike as possible. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, other, and I definitely wanted to take my time with the movie as much as audiences would allow. Mm-hmm. So that was important, and, and that led to taking out or not letting music be in some parts. Yeah. Um, who were the guys who do... The, you got two guys doing the score, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Danny Bensey and Saunders Jurians, they, they work together. They actually did the score for Martha, Marcy, May Marlene, if you remember that film. Right. And, and, and now they've done a lot they of... They did another score a score for another movie that was at the film festival uh, called uh, sure. Runoff. Yeah. Yeah, Runoff, exactly. Um, they've done a lot of great work. And they're very creative, and, and they have this great room that's instruments all over the walls, and... 
you can pull them down and play any of them. Uh -huh. And so they were just right up my alley in terms of a very natural feel. Right. Um, creating something from from scratch, not not so much on like a synthesizer, but just coming up with different sounds and instruments, and then turning that into into music. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm uh, what I remember about the score too is that it's not a manipulative score. It's not right. It's not. It's not there to manipulate your emotions. Really. Right. It's there to provide color, but it's not there right. to. It's. Uh, They're great about that. We talked about that a lot. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a that's a very 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 smart move. There's too much. I feel like a lot of music in movies these days is too. It's too wall to wall. There's too much of it. Uh, Audiences are smart. You know, I. I I don't, they don't want to be spoon fed, I don't think, and I think that they like, whether they, whether they say it up front or whether they, 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 you know, they admit it, I think they like to be challenged, I think they like to fill in the gaps, I think they don't want to be told how to think, mm -hmm. and um, you know, when the score does that, I think it's overreaching, I think it's a mistake, it's a disservice to the, to the story and the picture and the and, characters. And sometimes, you know, there's things like narration, like, that, that over, over, right. Explain yeah. things yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so this is your first narrative film. Yeah. But I know you've been making short films for mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah, I've done producing on some features, line produced some features, produced some features, and um, lots of shorts. Mm -hmm. Cut my teeth on short films. Right. Which is a great way to learn. So was there was there a moment where you said, okay, now I have to start doing a feature? Like, did you? Did you was this was, there, the was there a certain pressure that you were putting on yourself? Def well, definitely. I mean, I think when you're in, for me, when I was in the graduate film program, sort of the goal was I've got to get a feature done as a writer director. A short's not going to get me where I want to go, mm -hmm. and and so I, I put that pressure on myself. <laughs> Did you do you look at shorts as being a? Well, I've always I've always looked at shorts as like a, a good way to. Practice the craft. Uh, I mean, do you see? Do you, I think there. I think it. I think it can be any of the above. I. I think a short film. If a short. If a director wants to devote themselves to making short films, I think it's absolutely a legitimate art form. Uh -huh. And I say go for it. You know, I think they're At actually least, more difficult than features, to be honest. Well, yeah, because you have to really pare it, pare it down. You got to really be a great, you know, storyteller. Um, I think I find short films to be really difficult, but yes, I think they're great practice. Um, I did do a short film right before Wildlife, and part of it personally was, you know, I want to make sure that I can say, here's the, the tone and the characters and the story that I want to put on film, and this is my intention, and now let's go make it, and then at the end of the day, I wanted to make sure that I could accomplish what I set out to do. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a lot of confidence in moving and in going into wildlife and, and feeling like, okay, if we put the right pieces in place, then the movie can come out as I intend. Right. Um, because that, that's a part of filmmaking I think that's really hard, is that you, you start with something in your mind, in your imagination, and then it gets removed from that imagination further and further and further, until this final product, you know, after going through editing and post and all that, and it, it can be so far from where it started. Once it hits reality, the yeah, things, the it can be so far from where you started, and and you know, and you want to control that process in certain ways. Also, you want to let it grow. It's it, it's sort of the, the gardener versus architect uh -huh. method of filmmaking, and it's a it's it's a careful road. Um, I, to travel. I've always heard that, like, for instance, Woody Allen says that he can't go back and take a look at it, any of his movies, and I imagine that's the reason why he can't do it, is because yeah. they're so different from what he imagined Maybe when he so. was writing it on on paper, you know. Yeah. They come out, and he all he sees is the things he couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. Or the, the ways that he failed, or yeah. whatever. I mean, he, yeah. lo he looks at Manhattan as a failure. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty There's crazy. plenty of things I would change about wildlife. Yeah, it's it's you can play that card to yourself. I have a lot. Do you yeah. have that same sort of feeling about your own movies? Going back and taking a look at them, do you see? Do you do you look at the? Do you, do you see the? I see most the, of my short films as 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 not successful. Um, I see them as uh, you know as maybe a plus for effort. Uh -huh. um, and um, you know, in wildlife, I, I do see a successful, but I think it took all the different, all the work that I did. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know what you were imagining in there for the original film when you were 
had it on paper. Do, but do you feel you feel like you got it? It's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. I have to say, I'm, I even surprised myself. It's pretty true to to even the original draft of the script. You know, um, the tone, the pacing, the quietness. You know, the the authenticity, the the, the characters. It's all pretty much there. It's, you know, the score, even and the cinematography. It's all. It's all pretty much as I wanted. I, you know. You had a female cinematographer. I did. Obviously. Hilary Sparrow. She's true. There needs to be yeah. more female cinematographers. Needs to be more females. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything in the film business. Yeah. 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 They really do. And I really wanted to tell the story about a female. I think female characters are far more interesting. We, we know women are far more interesting than us men. They we're, are. We're, but, we're simpletons. But the thing is, but the thing is also is that these. Uh, Female stories aren't being told so. So when they are told, it seems ridiculously fresh. Yeah. Like you, you know. Yeah. A lot of you know nine times out of ten, when I see a movie done by a female uh, director, mm -hmm. I know that I'm. Usually, I come out and go, "Well, that was something different." You know, yeah. that was, you know, I I, yeah. I sense the hunger to have their voices yeah. being heard. I so. wanted there I wanted there to be a lot of women involved in the project. Um, Julie Christeas was the first producer I brought on um, and I wanted to be have a female cinematographer, female editor, um, really as much as as possible. And um, it ended up being a nice I think it ended up being a nice balance um, of everything. I, I mean I just had these visions of myself like constantly having to defend like why I'm do I have the ability to tell the story of a 14-year-old girl? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I don't know the answer to the question. I guess anybody can tell any story they want. Um, but there's a certain viewpoint that, that a female can bring mm -hmm. to storytelling that, that I don't think I fully understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of female uh, uh, directors with their films here at this festival this year. So. Yes. Yeah, festivals so, are one of the best places for the female directors to be seen, no question. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, finally, what are some of your influences uh, um, over the years? Filmmakers. Yeah. Filmmakers, films, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, um, Yeah. probably the easiest way to address that is I did have a reference list for Wildlife, and as I brought different creatives into the project, I would sort of share the list and say, look, this is what has influenced me and what I've thought about, you know, either by visual by visuals or by storytelling or by, you know, feeling in the writing of Wildlife. And um, one of the greats that I brought up was uh, Walkabout yeah, by Nicholas, Nicholas Rogue. Rogue. Yeah, yeah, Australia. And it's just so great. Which your film has some, you know, yeah. genital similarities. Yeah, I don't know when I first saw Walkabout. Um, I think... When I was a teenager, maybe in college, but it had a profound Well, you're a New York me. guy, so they play yeah. it up there. I think the last time I saw it was at the St. Mark's Theater. Yeah, I think US. I saw it in film school. Uh -huh. um, or I saw it in a film class when I was an undergraduate. Anyway, that was a big influence. Um, uh, Fish Tank was a big influence. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Andrew really Arnold movie. Yeah, the Andrew Arnold movie. I thought that was so fantastic. Um, Kelly Reichert's films we talked about, yeah. all of her work, all of Ramin Barani's work. Right. Um, sort of this new neo-real um, American independent movement that they've really led, Yeah, I think. Um, I already had the script for Wildlife when Martha Marcy May Marlene came out, but but it had an influence on me in the making of Wildlife, seeing it, uh -huh. you know, and thinking about casting and... and and, and, and how Wildlife would look. Um, Sweeter After, we talked about, the Adam McGoyan yes. film with Bruce Greenwood, so that was a big one. Um, trying to think back, Ballast? Great. Ballast? Yeah, Southeastern I haven't seen that. story. Um, I, I'm, I hope I'm not getting the filmmaker wrong, I think it's Lance Edmonds. Uh -huh. um, and it's a story about a, a young black boy who does not have a father Think it's set in, in Mississippi. Uh -huh. um, Maybe Gordon Weinstein. Green is he somebody that you like? George Washington, yeah. for sure, was or, on the list. All the real girls. Yeah, all the real girls I watched. All the real girls wasn't a big influence on Wildlife, but George Washington was. Yeah. Um, it's so poetic, obviously, and and he has quite artists. a way with with non actors. We mm -hmm. talked to him last year. He was here for uh, Joe. And really, he's it's so great that he's, you know, he went off, made a career for himself. 
and now he's be able to get back to some stuff that you know people really love him for. And yeah, he's enjoying that too. Yeah, he likes hopping back and forth between the sure. comedy and the and Why the, not? the sort of slice of life movies. That yeah, he's, he's really good at. Yeah, David Gordon Green, sure. Um, and then you know, going back to the, a lot of the great masters, um, Stanley Kubrick, of course. You know, I, the the quiet and and stillness of some of his moments and and movies. I think he's someone that shows patience in film that I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, Ingmar Ingmar Bergman, if you want to get really patient, yeah, you absolutely. Know, um, I love his films. I really do. I think those are my captures, two favorite filmmakers. Yeah, he captures life in a really beautiful way. Actually, I love Cassavetes. Mm -hmm. You know, he's used to be. He was at one point sort of my favorite filmmaker. Woman under the influence. Had a big influence on me. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a remarkable film. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. What are you gonna do? I know. You talk about movies forever. Kurosawa. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, um, finally, I want to ask you where you're going next. What are you doing next? You traveling? You're traveling around with this. Mm -hmm. What do you? Uh, I know you're an Atlanta native, but when did you leave Atlanta? Um, forever ago. <laughs> um, I haven't lived here since 2002. Okay. And and before that, I was gone for for college and and, and boarding school. Um, so I, I really have lived more of my life outside of Atlanta now. But I I definitely am an Atlanta native. And I get back here probably once or twice a year. My family's still here. Cool. Um, but three things are going on now. One, promoting wildlife, doing the festival tour. You know, closing the distribution. Um, that's one thing that's taking a lot of my time. I'm in. I'm actually going to. Tampa on Friday, Annapolis over the weekend, and then I'm going to Ashland, Oregon, and then I'm back to Florida. All in connection with this film? All with wildlife, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, wow. the Phoenix, Albuquerque, Minneapolis, coming down to Milledgeville, Georgia, actually, to play that film festival in a few weeks, okay. which is going to be terrific. Okay. So anyone that missed the Atlanta Film Festival can drive down to Milledgeville. Okay. Um, and, and you're looking for distribution, like, in, in September, you said? Yeah, we have a distributor. Um, we're signing the we're signing that contract soon. Um, knock on wood, and uh, yeah, it should be coming to about a dozen cities theaters in September. Well, that's good. I, I really encourage everybody to go out and check out uh, Wild Mike. Uh, it's uh, it's magnificent. It's beautifully filmed. It's got great acting and great writing. Thank you as so well. much. Thanks. It really rings really true it. and. Uh, I congratulate you. Thank you, Dean. Very much. Thanks very much for having me. I love talking about it. Yeah, it's a great movie. Okay, guys, uh, Dean Treadway here at the Atlanta Film Festival, and we'll check you later. Uh, check out Frank All Green's Wildlife.